Hey everyone, Jigo here, and today I'm uh, starting a new Let's Play video series, and I'll be playing Back to the Future the game, as you can see. Um, this game was first published in 2010 and 2011 in um, different episodes um, by Telltale Games. So it's a typical Telltale Games episodic adventure game, and as you can probably guess, it's based around the Back to the Future movie franchise. Actually, um, one of the the original um, writers of the the trilogy was also involved in this series, in this in this video game series, uh, Bob Gale, who uh, co-wrote the story for the movies uh, with uh, the director Robert Zemeckis. So it's a continuation of the the movie franchise. It's set uh, about five to six months after um, the last movie ended. Um, so it's set in 1986, and uh, yeah, let's start the game and, and see what the story has in store for us. And let's uh, show some goals so we can keep track of what we're supposed to be doing. All right, I'm ready. Good evening. I'm Dr. Emmett Brown. I'm standing on the parking lot at Twin Pines Mall. It's Saturday morning, October 26th, 1985, 118 AM. And this is temporal experiment number one. Come on, I need... Hey, boy, get in there. That a boy. In you go. Get down. Get your seatbelt on. That's it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. Please note that Einstein's clock is in precise synchronization with my control watch. Got it? Right, Jack Doc. Good. Have a good trip, Einstein. Watch your head. Oh, if you've watched uh, the movie, then you'll probably recognize this scene. It's uh, one of the. Uh, you got that thing hooked up to the car. Starting scenes of the Watch first movie. This. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Not me. The car. The car. My calculations are correct. When this baby hits 88 miles per hour, you're gonna see some serious shit. Uh, remote control DeLorean always wanted one. Watch this, watch this. Occurred at exactly 1.20 a.m. and zero seconds! Hot Jesus Christ! Jesus Christ, Doc! You disintegrated Einstein! Calm down, Marty! I didn't disintegrate anything! The molecular structure of both Einstein and the car are completely intact! And where the hell are they? The appropriate question is, when the hell are they? You see, Einstein has just become the world's first time traveler! I sent him into the future! One minute into the future, to be exact, and at precisely 1.21 a.m. and zero seconds, we shall catch up with him and the time machine. I think this is what I said in the movie. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Doc. Are you telling me that you built a time machine? Out of a DeLorean? The way I see it, if you're going to build a time machine into a car, why not do it with some style? Besides, the stainless steel construction made the flux dispersal. Look out! And he should be back. Except he's not. Uh, Doc? Huh, oh, that's peculiar. Uh, where's the car, Doc? It should have caught up with us. 27 seconds ago. Doc, uh, w what happened to Einstein? No need for concern. It's probably just a minor miscalibration of the time circuits. Marty, could you get my notebook? It should be in the toolbox. Well, let's hope he didn't disintegrate Einstein then. As you've probably noticed, they actually got uh, the real actor who played uh, Doc Emmett Brown in the movie to do the voice acting for his actual character as well. So that's a nice plus. 
So, can I get to the toolbox? Notebook. Notebook. Got it. Flux capacitor? That's it! What the heck's a flux capacitor? My latest invention. The thing that makes time travel possible. In this notebook, I've detailed the nearly three decades of scientific breakthroughs necessary to build a working time machine. If it ever fell into the wrong hands, the consequences could be catastrophic. Let's see. It's mass equals I times Z, and E equals the square root of Z times C squared, and the flux dispersal rate is inversely proportional to yeah. the fourth root of N. In the movie, N the there's some Libyan then. terrorists who show up, so we actually should get um, out of here. Um, Doc, shouldn't we get out of here before the Libyans show up? What is it? I've made a horrible mistake. Oh, Doc is disappearing as well. Doc! No! I'm sorry, Marty. Seems something Doc, got messed up on the back. timeline. Doc! Causing Doc to disappear and the, the mall as well. Doc! Oh. Only a nightmare. Marty, is everything okay? Yeah, Mom, I... It was, it was just a nightmare. Uh, I was in the past, and Doc was there. It's a picture from the third movie. Well, you're safe and sound now. Back in good old 1986. But you'd better get up. Your father's waiting for you. Huh? Weren't you going to meet him over at Doc's? Holy crap, I'm late! Doc loves his clocks, as you can see. So this is no doubt at his place. Jules Verne as well, huge fanboy. He actually named his children Jules and Verne, two boys. This is a replica of a Hill Valley city center. Einstein's Einstein's football and all the clocks. And this is what Marty used to play his guitar, so the, uh, the amplifier and the huge speakers. Estate cell. As you saw, the Bob Gale was involved in the story. Dad, though. are we too late to stop the sale? Better late than never. You wouldn't believe how much rare stuff there is back here. That's Doc stuff. The city has no right now, to. Now, son, I know you're upset, but your friend's been gone for months, and the city really seems hell bent on using his land for that new parking garage. And hey, is that a first edition Jules Verne? It's just not fair. But at least things can't get any worse. Hey, Marty! Hi, Biff. Oh, Biff. Come to see if the old crackpot had any buried treasure? Nah, I guess I'm just... remembering. Search dog's lab for dangerous materials. So, Biff, who you just saw a minute ago, so one of the main antagonists, or the main antagonist of the the movie series. Well, him and his uh, family, well, as uh, Marty and Doc travel through time. Select items around the lab to make sure Doc didn't leave anything dangerous lying around. Okay, let's see. Doc feeder. Hey, let me now, Biff. Leave Marty alone. This is a very emotional time for him. Oh, sure. Sorry, Marty. This was 
used in the first movie to feed uh, Einstein, which is Doc's dog. But uh, obviously the cans are gone, so it's no longer operational. Fish a tank. fish tank? I never knew Doc raised fish. Doc's fish had weird taste and decor. I kind of like Doc. Fish tank. Television. Does nature contrive it so that even with a time machine, you can't intervene to prevent your own conception, for example? Well... You can. That was proved in the movies. Let's see, let's have a talk with Dad here, George. Hey, Dad. Who's running this sale anyway? Oh, that'd be me, son. You? Why? Well, once it became apparent that the bank was going through with the sale, I volunteered to oversee it in order to make sure that Doc's stuff would be treated with a modicum of respect. Isn't that right, Biff? You got it, Mr. McFly! I'm telling you, this sale is a joke. Doc's only been gone for a few months, and I happen to know... Yes, you've told us he's not dead. He's on a trip. Model of Let's okay. say you're right. Have you tip. considered that this trip may not have been entirely voluntary? I hate to say it, but Doc's run up some pretty sizable debts around town. Maybe he's just hiding from his creditors. Oh, wow. Okay, so Doc's disappeared, has left some debt around, and now they're selling his place and everything he owns you got doc wrong sure maybe he's not so good with money that's just because his mind's always on bigger things but he's still a straight-up guy he'd never run away from his problems well you know him better than I do son but the bank is within its rights to sell off his stuff maybe you should try to find some things to remember him by before Biff grabs them all what's Biff doing here he wasn't a friend of Doc's. It's a public sale, Marty. Everyone's allowed. <laughs> Even Biff. About Biff, Dad, I, I know you're trying to help. He talks a big game, son, but he's not so tough. I've been dealing with him a long time. Believe me, I can handle him. So can I. I guess you can. Okay, son. I'll stay out of your way, but you know where to find me. Do you think dreams can predict the future? Well, you know I don't go in for that mystical stuff, but I do think they can reflect how you're feeling about the future. What did you dream? Oh, just <clears throat> weird stuff yeah, about Doc. Well, that's understandable, don't you think? I guess, but... I feel like it was telling me something. All right. I'll keep looking around. Thanks, Dad. Let's have a look at that model then. Doc built this model at Downtown Hill Valley way back in 1955. The clock tower in the courthouse even works. What the? Is that Doc's notebook in there? Hey, that looks just like the courthouse. You gotta hand it to the old coot. He was good with his hands. Uh, Biff, uh, can, can I see that a minute? This would look great in my fish tank. Give the old carp something new to nibble on. You know, you and my folks go way back. Yeah, so? So how about letting me have that model courthouse uh, for old time's sake? No, I think I'll keep it. Give it here, Biff. Well, well, look at what we have here. Uh -oh. Looks like plans for something. What's a flux catheter? It's none of your business. Doc asked me Browns to... Browns worm food, kid. But this looks like it might be worth something. Ha! Ah. Okay, so... Definitely need that notebook. Let's see. Hey, Biff. Biff probably... I'll pay you for it. How much? Money. Uh, Not enough. It's... No. Okay. I only want that notebook side, because... Sentimental probably not. Well, I'm, I'm sentimental. It's like a piece of Doc. Doc's dead! 
Time to get over it and move on. Worthless. It's just a notebook with Doc's scribblings. What did Doc ever accomplish? Nothing. Yeah, then it's worthless, right? If it was really worthless, you wouldn't want it so bad. <sighs> that notebook wouldn't mean anything to you. You wouldn't even understand what's in it. You calling me ignorant? Um, yes. I just can't let you keep that notebook. It's dangerous. What, is it set to explode or something? Well, uh, in a way. I'll take my chances. Okay, so we're not talking out of him out of it. Let's see. Ah, uh, never mind. No. Distract him with some music. Wait, I got one. Nope. Mind treating element. Feels like that was a lifetime ago. Actually, I guess it was. Uh, it was actually a mind reading helmet that didn't work at all from the first movie, which he made in 1955. Oh. Yeah, that's Marty's guitar. So. Hey, Dad, wh why is my guitar got a price tag on it? Sorry, son. Must have been an overzealous clerk. Just pick it up, I'll iron things out with the bank. Left click on the blinking inventory button to open your inventory. Inventory. Marty's guitar. Examine. It may not look like much, but it packs a wallop. What I remember from the first movie is that he hooks it up to the amplifier and really put the volume and the boosters and everything to the maximum and then he got blown away. So maybe that's something that we can use on Biff. Let's see. Here's an oldie, but a goodie. One, two, three. <laughs> Hey, look! It's Chuck Butthead! Shut up, Beth. No. Oh. Let me show you how it's done. Well, it's one for the monkey, two for the snow, three to get ready now, go, Scott, go! Those are not the lyrics, you idiot. Let's see if he does it again. And let's, let's make some noise. Indeed. Let's see if he tries to interrupt us again. And now, something your kids are really gonna like. Thanks for warming them up for me, butthead. Oh yeah. 100% baby. Now watch me blow the lid off this joint. Whatever you say. I can, Biff. Oh, shit. Thanks for the notebook, Biff. Ah, uh, Doc, where are you? Oh, is that the DeLorean? Yes, it is. Looks like it traveled through time as well. Anyone inside? Doc? Einstein. Where do you come from, boy? Didn't you bring Doc with you? No Doc, though. No. 
Everything's turned off. There's a tape recorder. Party? There! Party, if you're hearing this recording, then the DeLorean's automatic retrieval feature is a resounding success. Automatic retrieval? In case of my failure to return to the DeLorean within an allotted time, I programmed the time machine to jump to these four dimensional coordinates without me. As you are well aware, time travel is an inherently risky activity, and despite my elaborate precautions, there's always the possibility that I could land in trouble sometime. And that sometime is now, or then, or, uh, maybe later. He's in trouble! Marty, you come to my rescue in the past, or was it the future? Anyway, I'm relying on you to do it again. Please, take the DeLorean back, or, or forward, to whatever it is I'm stuck in time. When you get there, I'm sure you'll figure out what to do. That's it? Aren't you gonna tell me when that is? Just go to the date specified on the time circuit readout under the heading marked Last Time Departed. Good luck. Right, right. Last Time Departed. Last Time Departed. Uh, oh, jeez. Come on. Come on. Come on. Crap! Oh, great. How am I supposed to find him now? Well, there's a shoe. Okay, Doc, I know I haven't seen you in a few months, but I'm pretty sure this isn't your shoe. Let's have a look at the shoe. This time traveling shoe is my only clue to finding Doc. Okay, so I have to use this shoe somehow. Um, I guess we'll try to figure out in part two of the, the video series. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.